Hello and welcome to the FinTech Finance Virtuina. And today we're really going to be talking about the kind of revolution that's going on in self-service banking. And joining me today, I have two guests who are going to provide some brilliant expertise and insight into that revolution. Guys, thank you so much for joining us here today. Um, so first up, we actually have Mark Aldridge, the head of international sales over at Auriga. Mark, thank you so much for joining. Could you tell us a bit about yourself and also Auriga, please? Yeah, thanks, Doug. It's great to be here. I'm, as you say, Mark Aldred. I've been in what we now refer to as fintech for 40 years. And all of my time has been dedicated to focusing on helping financial services providers deliver their products and services to their customers over digital channels. Auriga is a world leading provider of solutions which, which are built on a couple of principles, that of openness and multi-vendor software. And they integrate all of the bank's digital channels into a single environment, so uh, sharing services across those channels and include all of the components that are required to manage a self-service estate and to regenerate the branch of the next generation. So that's what Auriga do. And uh, we're happy to be partnering with our friends at ACI. Amazing. Well, speaking of, we also have Robin Setti, the Senior Principal Product Manager, Partner Solutions over at ACI Worldwide. Robin, thank you also for joining us here today. Could you give us a, a bit of background to yourself and also ACI, please? Yep, I, I'm Robin Setti, and I, I look after ACI's strategic partnerships in the consumer payment space. Um, I've been in the payments industry for 32 years and 21 of those have been at ACI. So I'm almost at the point where I can say that I've been at ACI for half of its existence. Um, if you don't know about ACI, we are the world's leading provider of real-time payment solutions. Um, we have uh, customers, we have uh, um, 6,000 customers across the globe, um, spanning different sectors, um, billers, merchants, and banking. And, and that includes 19 of the world's leading 20 banks. That's incredible. And I, I, guys, thank you so much for your, your time for appearing on the VA today. So I think really to, to kick things off then, Mark, um, you brought up how uh, you guys at Auriga really kind of cover the whole spectrum of, of enabling banks to, to access um, digital solutions. So I've got to ask, Mark, then, all departments of the bank have really had this revolution, but maybe none more so than the way that people actually interact with their bank now. So I, mean, I want to, uh, yeah, I want to ask, what have been some of the biggest changes to self-service banking, especially branches, maybe, in the last two to three years? Well, choosing a period of two to three years is, is an interesting slant, Doug, and, and uh, I'd like to develop on that because it highlights different periods. Of course, there was already a, a gradual movement amongst a growing number, growing percentage of banks' clients towards digital channels, um, as we now consider them to be called. Uh, Self-service increasingly was becoming, before COVID, something that happened on the customer's devices and outside of the branch. Now, COVID obviously accelerated that trend, not least because governments worldwide were restricting the movements of their citizens, uh, in the interest of our health, of course. Now, whether those changes in behavior are temporary or permanent and the trends will continue, that remains to be seen. But certainly most retail, most leisure businesses are hoping and indeed expecting that, that customers will go back to their retail presence, go back to their high streets. Um, however, banks have accelerated the process of branch closures, have accelerated the um, closing of ATMs along with the branches. Um, and in some areas, banks have started to see ATMs as a bit of a burden uh, and sought partners and third parties to take responsibility for them. So we've seen changes in, in self-service in that way. However, a growing number of banks worldwide, we're seeing deploying in-branch technology uh, to accommodate the client's changing needs, to accommodate those behaviors. And that helps them deliver services more efficiently. And those banks are exploiting the branch estate as well as self-service to change the way they engage with their customers. Interesting. Now, I've got to ask, Robin, do, do you agree? Do you think that that's been really the, the key and obviously then had exponential changes, as uh, Mark said there, because of the pandemic? Yes, I definitely do agree that's that's the case. Um, it's interesting that um, the high street's been bemoaning the fact that they're unable to get their customers um, to visit their premises, whereas actually banks have been looking, previously been looking to do that to, uh, for years in order to, to save, to save money. Yeah, and I, 
going back to, to that reduction then and, and kind of the, the, the heart of what people do when they, they go to a branch is, is often the ATM. So Mark, um, with, with that, that the ATM being almost the cornerstone of banking for maybe the last 50 years, what role should self-service devices play going forward then with that reduction in the branch? Yeah, um, I think what we're seeing is a number of, of these devices, ATMs, self-service estates, are, are now being run by organizations other than banks, in, including, of course, Auriga. Um, so we'll see these organizations starting to deploy next generation devices, self-service devices, which offer more. They'll need to build on the transaction set. They'll need to deliver on the services that they deliver through the devices to increase the commercial viability of, of their businesses. Um, but those that are owned and deployed by banks, um, we see them being at the heart of the modernization of the branch estate. We, we see them being fundamentally important, self-service and assisted self-service, the same technologies, but with more capabilities. These are the way that we think banks will engage with their customers in person um, in the future. Um, so mathematically, there may be less ATMs in the old fashioned sense, but they'll certainly be, and, and, and that will be regional, of course, but certainly what self-service and ATM devices and assisted service devices that, that remain and that grow and that are deployed in the future, they'll do much more. They'll, they'll deliver much more to banks and to their customers. Now, Robin, I've got to ask then, you know, with this pretty obvious need to innovate and, and change along with the, the changing banking model, why have banks typically been quite slow to enable these innovations then? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, I, I think it's, it's the usual factors. Um, banks have always been compelled to focus a lot of their time and energy on regulation, fighting financial crime and, and maintaining systems. Um, so they need a really strong business case to do something forward looking. Uh, as Mark's mentioned, the, the ATM has gradually come to be seen as a bit of a burden. It's just a necessity to allow customers to access their money. So what we've seen is some small tactical initiatives to gain, to gain some value from the channel, you know, ticketing or coupon provisioning or some broad brush advertising, but nothing really strategic. Uh, and making change um, in the ATM channel, it's, it's risky and it's expensive. Um, and what we've had is the, the software in the terminal and the software in the switch that's driving the terminal. And they've, they've got to be dancing perfectly in step when you make a change. So you've got to plan carefully and that's going to increase the time to market. Um, and that reduces a business case that, for such an initiative. Um, and then you add to that that this is a channel that's always got to be highly reliable, as it has been. You ask, why do I change something for little benefit? If, if it ain't broke, why fix it? But I think, you know, now's the time to look at that. Um, we are seeing a rationalization of branches, but, but they cannot disappear altogether. So where they remain, they've got to be functional. They've got to be efficient, but they've still got to be welcoming and they've still got to be supportive. So with the new technology available, um, now is the time to repurpose the ATM channel. I think the business case is there. Interesting. Now, I, I, I think, Robin, you've really hit on a, an interesting point. I know we've, we've brought it up earlier in the discussion, but the banks really are closing their real estate. Um, and as you said, you've, it, it's almost a very hard balance to, to find, isn't it? You're having that brilliant service, um, but also reducing the whole whole real estate at the same time so with that in mind does robin do you think that means that self-service devices are going to become ever more critical in banking going forward too yeah i i i think as you say that the, the um the branch the branch has been challenged for, for a number of years you know first you had the atm um that was going to replace the branch but it couldn't it's just a cash dispenser after all then you've had telephone banking online banking you can you can now bank from your house you got the mobile channel you can bank when you're on the bus but but there are there always are functions that need human interaction they're always going to be customers who want to visit a branch who want to be there um so you know i i've, I've thought about the the atm it's called the, the middle letter is a T, teller, but it's not been a teller. It has been a cash dispenser. Perhaps the real teller machine um, is a self-service 
device that provides that automation that allows the, the customer to interact maybe through video assisted terminals as and when needed. So the branch can be efficient, but it can still be welcoming and allow people to perform functions in, in a branch type environment, um, but not that old, that old type of branch that's just performing um, sort of operational tasks one after the other. Yeah. And, and Mark, I, I'm really interested in your perspective here as well. You know, we've talked about the reduction of real estate and, and Robin's brought in some really interesting innovations there. You know, do you agree? Do you think that now self-service bankings have uh, self-service devices, sorry, have to kind of come into their own? For well, sure. I think they're the centerpiece of this. I, I think the, the rate of closures of branches um, has been accelerating, has been, in my opinion, unjustifiably accelerated. <clears throat> And we've talked about the high street, the different retail businesses in the high street, the different leisure businesses in the high street, and they're very, very different approaches to, to this problem. In the case of banking, the closure of branches is, is not helpful to high street presences. It's not helpful to communities. It's not helpful to access to cash. So, so the self-service um, family of devices, and it's more than ATM, it's assisted service, it's kiosk, it's a range of devices, they absolutely will be, should be the centerpiece of the new branch. And, and we see initiatives starting to repair the damage done by branch closures, shared branches, shared hubs, for example. The thing about ATM-based technology, I'm going to call it self-service and assisted service technology, is that it can offer what now 100% of the same service services as, as a traditional teller. Everything can be automated. It can offer it 24 hours with personal assistance, with remote assistance. Um, so that can generate more income for the people who own the branches, whether they're banks or, or others. Um, and, and it creates a better service experience for the customer. So there will be different model branches following the closure of these real estates we'll see the openings of a new a new style of branch perhaps smaller perhaps pop-up perhaps uh, in different places to meet demand and self-service and assisted service will will be at the heart of that we'll also see i think uh, the growth in independently managed self-service and assisted service estates and branches and and that model used to be threatened and has been threatened by regulatory change by in some markets um, and it will only happen if the deployers of those um, <coughs> devices exploit the full potential of the device and, and implement an infrastructure which enables this kind of flexibility. So I think, yeah, real estate closures too much, too fast. Is it reversible? Yes, if the right model is adopted. And what will be at the heart of that new model? Assisted service and self-service devices using the technologies that Robin and we bring to market. Well, yeah, that actually brings me on to my, my next point, Mark. Obviously, um, ACI and Auriga have, have entered into a partnership. And I'm, we've already brought up in this discussion how this is a, a real change to the whole banking infrastructure from actual physical stores to but also the technology and, and the way that banks are going to operate in the future. And, and Robin, I think you actually mentioned earlier, that requires a lot of work and you can't just be offline for a, a number of days. That, that, that's critical to not be like that. So, you know, currently... Um, Robin, if I could ask you then, banks have had less and less time to adapt and evolve because of the, the sheer amount of technology, the agile ways of working. Can you tell me a bit more about the partnership between ACI and Riga and, and what it will mean having this end-to-end -end solution that Mark just touched on briefly there? Yeah, um, it's, it's really about each party delivering its speciality. Um, the world of electronic payments, it's evolved so much since ACI delivered its first ATM solution back in the mid 70s. And that trend, it just continues to accelerate. Our solutions have become more and more sophisticated with delivering real time, any to any secure, always available payments. And similarly, as we've talked about, the physical devices are becoming more and more sophisticated, offering things like video assistance, targeted advertising, et cetera, uh, in this self-service banking world. So it no longer makes sense to treat the management of the devices as merely a component of the payment engine, which is what they have been so far. Um, the management of the terminals and devices, it, 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 that merits its own solution. Um, it can do things like cash, cash forecasting, targeted advertising, et cetera. 
so for ACI, it became a question of, do we want to build something ourselves to manage self-service devices or do we partner? And when we see that Ariga has been providing advanced terminal management solutions for decades, when we also see that like ourselves, they're vendor agnostic, hardware vendor agnostic, it just made a lot of sense to form the partnership. Incredible. And Mark, I'm, I'm really interested in that because that's something I've, I've been hearing increasingly from a number of, of banks and fintechs as well. It's, it's the ecosystem, the financial services ecosystem has gotten so broad. You know, you're no longer just banking. You have to do every part of the technology stack now. So, I mean, do you agree with Robin? That's what, what this partnership can bring? Yeah, yes, I do. Absolutely. Uh, and, you know, it's an end to end solution. It's integrated already. It brings, brings together best of breed providers. This This is what consumers and customers and banks demand what they need, what they deserve. So we've come together because we should, and we have this integrated solution. And, and together, ACI and Origa can offer ATM deployers and, and owners of self-service estates and branch estates, whether they're banks or not, we can offer them a, a, this best of breed solution. Um, we can offer them an unmatched experience that there isn't a vendor out there or a collection of vendors with a similar proposition. Um, and, and that'll help us bring about the advancements in ATM self-service and assisted service technologies that, that Robin touched on, the things that we wanted to do for a long time, envisioned for a long time, but never delivered upon. So we can start to deliver those more value, more cost-effective uh, uh, distribution of products and services so that there's a real 21st century feel to this. Uh, and, and the branch networks that evolve following COVID as we see what the new normal looks like will have this firm foundation, this strong foundation, this end-to-end -end best of breed solution. Interesting. And I think you've you've kind of uh, touched on something that maybe I hadn't thought of before, because you always hear about, for instance, the neobanks taking up all this, this market share because they provide that 21st century approach. Um, and actually, maybe if the traditional banks had grasped this 21st century approach and put it in their retail or their retail estates um, or even yeah, their self-service banking, maybe they could have captured a different audience than they previously thought. So, Mark, can I ask you know, customers, as we've, we've just touched on, love choice. Um, and so I want to hear some of these brilliant new offerings that self-service devices could could give, you know, that they're not solely cash focused and maybe put the traditional banks um, back in a really good position going forward in, into the 2020s, you know, and maybe even gain a bit more of the market share back from some of the neobanks. Yeah, you know, I think the relationship between legacy banks and neobanks is a complex one, and, and they look at each other enviously. And one of the things that a neobank will envy about a legacy bank is its customer base, the data that it's got that it can use to its advantage, the relationships. And, and above all, probably the range of products and services. Um, neobanks, app banks, the new entrants typically start with and often remain as a single product uh, entity. So, so they'll be looking jealously at all of those things. And to your point, what more, what different can you do through self-service and assisted service devices? The answer is everything. Anything that a financial services organization offers can be distributed through these channels. And that's not the case with with some of the digital channels mm. so 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 that means that we start to look at the relationship between neobanks and legacy banks uh, this mutual admiration what we can't afford what legacy banks can't afford is to drive to the lowest com common denominator because they'll just end up as a, a kind of an inferior yeah. digital bank because we know that the new entrants have got fantastic capability customer friendly easy to use you know really gen z sort of product um, placement so the legacy banks shouldn't drop to that, but the, the neobanks, the new entrants, they need access to these customers. They need access to a new set of products and services. So we'll see partnerships, we'll see um, uh, acquisitions, we'll see change, and we'll see relationships between these two kinds of, of organizations for the benefit of the customer. But ultimately, the best of both worlds is the only way to serve the customer right. And, and our technology is equally applicable to a legacy bank or to a new entrant who wants to build the capability to deal personally with their customers in these assisted service environments. Incredible. And Robin, do, do, you, do you agree in that? that kind of yeah. Gives I, the banks that, that extra win. Well, I, well, I do. I think um, th there's almost a, a perception that, that, that the, uh, the, the new neobanks, they don't have the cost burden of 
the legacy banks and therefore they um, they have that advantage but you you cannot you can't lose sight of the fact that um, the legacy banks have got a great deal of benefit and advantage themselves and it would be foolish to to throw that away as mark said in order to to um, go down to the lowest denominator yeah and robin then i i think one thing that that maybe i'm, I'm interested in we always hear how uh, even when it comes to payments customers actually want choice uh, maybe finance had, had gone on too long thinking that they could just uh, financial services could just offer up the, the bare minimum but now there's competition um and and banks have to offer choice. Customers do now demand it. So I, can I ask a, a bit more about the omni-channel way of interacting with a bank now? You know, what can a self-service device actually provide in this regard? Yeah, omni-channel, it's, it's, a word, it's the word that the industry's come up with, but it, it's actually, it's, a, it's, it's really quite simple. It's, it's a modern day expectation of how people do things, how people interact with anything. Um, you know, if you go on Facebook, if I, you, you, you might post a picture uh, from your laptop and then you pick up your phone and you expect to see notifications and feedback on that picture immediately there and then. Uh, and it's the same with banks. They, the customer, they, they, they have, they, there are multiple inward real-time channels into a bank. Um, but they own that single relationship. So, you, you know, just as you have multiple channels for a social media account with the same look and feel and the same consistency, um, you should expect the same multiple channels into your, into your bank, again, with the same look and feel. Um, I, I actually, if I go back to the start of my career in payments, um, I worked at a retail bank over 30 years ago and there were at the time there were there were effectively two main real time channels that would affect intraday balances. There was the ATM channel, and there was the point of sale channel. And and this bank that I was at, it found itself in a position where the customer could spend all of its available funds at a retailer and then immediately withdraw the same available funds from an ATM. And so one of these projects I worked on was to keep those two systems of record in step so that we could prevent that from happening. And now we've just got even more channels and it's important to make sure that they're consistent. Um, so it's kind of like the same problem, but on a bigger scale, um, expectations have grown um, and the account is being hit from even more sources and of course with far greater frequency. Uh, you know, and, and, and if I could give an example, imagine being able to go to an AT, um, sorry, to initiate an ATM withdrawal from your mobile phone for one of your children so they can withdraw funds when they're out, out with a friend or maybe having making a cash deposit at an ATM and immediately being able to use at that point, being able to send an instant payment to a relative in real time there's actually no reason not to expect that. So, Mark, if I could also follow up from some of the, the really interesting use cases that, that Robin brought up just then, um, you know, what do you see for the future of self-service banking? We've talked about all these innovations. What do you see as coming up next that we'll be able to actually see from customers' point of view? Well, the, the sky's the limit, Doug. Anything that a bank can do can be done using this technology. It can be done 24 hours. We can see um, personal assistants in branches with tablet technology engaging with the customer on a one-to-one -one basis, selling them products and services that are specific to their needs and requirements because we have the customer data. We can see the same thing going online overnight remotely via video support so that everything that you can do with your bank through the post, in person, in the branch, over the telephone, over the internet, you'll be able to do in these assisted service environments 24 hours. So the sky's the limit, I think, is the answer. Amazing. And guys, thank you so much for your time. I think that's where we're going to wrap it up there. But it was absolutely brilliant. I'm so excited to see some of these real life use cases in, in my self-service uh, devices coming up soon. And also to all our viewers, thank you so much for watching. You can catch the rest of the series and much more over at www.fintechf.com. And of course, YouTube and LinkedIn, where I'll see you in the comments. So thanks very much, guys. And thank you, Doug. Goodbye. Thank you.